stoichiometry and limiting reactants. Okay, so before we get started, let's just talk a little bit more about chemical equations. Okay, now we've seen these guys before. So remember on this side of the equation, in front of the arrow, we have our reactants. The arrow says react to produce, and then here is our product. Of course, we can have more than one product. It depends on what specific reaction we're working with. Okay, and we've also talked about these coefficients. So we talked about them in, in, the, in terms of molecules. We said it takes three molecules of hydrogen gas to with one molecule of nitrogen to produce two molecules of ammonia, for instance. Now, we have the mole concept now, so we can look at this chemical reaction in a slightly different way. And now we're going to say that it takes three moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of nitrogen to produce two moles of ammonia. So now we're going to talk in terms of mole ratios. Now these mole ratios help us out a lot. And they allow us to relate the mass of reactant required to produce a certain amount of product. And we can also do that in reverse, although we won't in this presentation, but we will in other examples where let's say we know we want a certain mass of product so we can calculate how much reactant we would need to make that amount of product. And we would do this using stoichiometry. And stoichiometry is basically just the quantitative relationship between the number of moles of various products and reactants in a balanced chemical equation. And it's based on the law of conservation of mass. So now let's look at our chemical equation and think about moles. So for example, now it takes three moles of hydrogen gas plus one mole of nitrogen gas to get two moles of ammonia gas. And so now we're going to see how we can use this information. And our big question here is how much product can be made? So stoichiometry is just a way to determine exactly how much product can be, can be made from a given amount of reactants. And our general problem solving strategy is always going to involve first converting the mass of any given reactants to moles. Okay, remember moles are the bridge from the, the macroscopic world where we're measuring a certain amount of mass to the microscopic world, so moles of atoms or moles of molecules. And now we're going to use the balanced chemical equation to relate the moles of reactants required to make a given number of moles of product. Okay, and we'll see how this works when we get to our example, because this is the new step. Okay, and then finally we're going to convert the moles of product, so the result of this, to mass. All right, so it's always going to be mass to moles for the reactants, or what we're starting with, using the balanced chemical equation to figure out how relate the number of moles of reactant and product and then finally convert the moles of product to mass. Okay, so let's do an example. Now we're going to put a few numbers in here. So how much ammonia can be can we make from 4.53 grams of hydrogen gas given all of the nitrogen that's needed? And that's just another way of saying that nitrogen is in excess. So we have extra. We have all we need, okay? So we can focus on just how much hydrogen we have. And so the first thing we're going to do is convert our hydrogen gas to moles of hydrogen gas. Now, watch out for this subscript, okay? So notice the molar mass is two times what's shown on the periodic table because there are two moles of hydrogen in it, okay? And so we have 4.53 grams of hydrogen the mole, divided by the molar mass of hydrogen, which is equal to one mole of hydrogen. And we're get, now we're in two moles of hydrogen gas. And that's 2.247 moles, okay? So that's step one. And we've seen this before. We know how to go from grams to moles. So here's our new step, okay? Now we're going to use the balanced chemical equation to relate moles of hydrogen needed to make moles of ammonia. So how do we do that? Okay, so here's what we start with. Okay, that's just from the previous slide. That's from step one, okay? And now... We need to figure out how many moles of hydrogen it takes to make moles of ammonia, okay? So we're going to put, see we have moles of hydrogen here, so it takes three moles of hydrogen. That cancels those guys out, okay? And then now we're going to, and it's going to be related to the amount of ammonia in the balanced chemical equations. So that's two moles of ammonia. And when we do this math, 
2.247 times 2 divided by 3, we're going to get 1.498 moles of ammonia. Okay? Now notice I'm not worrying about sig figs yet because we're not to the end of the problem, so I'm carrying an extra. Okay? And basically, this part of the conversion here just means that it takes 3 moles of hydrogen for every 2 moles of ammonia made. And so in the end, we can only get about 1.5 moles of ammonia based on what we start with. All right. So now, last thing we need to do is just convert our moles of ammonia to the mass produced. Okay. So here's our moles of ammonia. And it, in one mole of ammonia, there are 17.031 grams. Okay. And so when we do this math, then we end up with 25.5 grams of ammonia. And so now let's just think about this for a second. Does our answer make sense? Okay. So there's a whole mole of ammonia. We end up with 25.5 grams. We, we're, we actually were able to produce one and a half moles. So that seems like a reasonable answer. Okay, so now we're going to tweak this just a little teeny bit. Okay, so in our previous example, we assumed that we had all the nitrogen gas that we needed to react all of the hydrogen to produce ammonia. But a lot of the time, we're limited to a certain amount of each reactant. We only have so much available. So for instance, let's say that we had the same 4.53 grams of hydrogen, but only 5.0 grams of nitrogen. So would the amount of ammonia that we can make change? How can we figure this out? All right. So now, we already know that we can make 1.5 moles of ammonia from 4.53 grams of hydrogen. Okay, and that's if we have all of the nitrogen we need. Now let's do the same thing, except now let's assume we have all of the hydrogen we need and react our five grams of nitrogen gas. Okay, so let's go ahead and convert nitrogen gas, our mass of nitrogen gas, to moles. Okay, so 5.0 grams divided by the molar mass of nitrogen gas, and we're going to end up with 0.1785 moles of nitrogen. Okay, so this is the number of moles of nitrogen we have to react. All right, now we're going to our second step, and this is where we can stop. So we're going to use our balanced chemical equation to relate the moles of nitrogen available to the moles of ammonia made. Okay, so here's our moles of nitrogen that we have available, and we can see from our balanced chemical equation it takes one mole of nitrogen gas to produce two moles of ammonia. And so we're going to end up with 0.357 moles of ammonia now. Okay, so now this is where we have to think about limiting reactant. So if we have all of the nitrogen we need, we can make one and a half moles of ammonia. If we have all of the hydrogen we need, from 5 grams of nitrogen, we can only make 0.357 moles of ammonia. All right. So which reactant limits the amount of ammonia that we can produce? Okay. So basically, we're thinking about which one runs out first. Okay. And why don't you think about that? Which one do you think runs out first? Okay. Now, based on the amount that each one can make separately with the other one in excess, we can see that nitrogen makes less, okay? And that's the limiting reactant, whichever one makes less, because it runs out and it limits the amount of ammonia made. So basically, we can't keep on producing ammonia from the amount of hydrogen gas we have because we don't have its partner anymore. This is all gone, okay? So nitrogen gas runs out first to limit the amount of ammonia, so nitrogen is the limiting reactant. Okay, so let's just summarize this a little bit. Uh, so basically stoichiometry is a way to determine exactly how much product we can make from a given amount of reactants, and of course this can work in reverse. So suppose we want a certain amount of product, we can figure out how much we need of each reactant. And our general problem solving strategy is always going to start with converting mass to moles. Okay. Then we're going to use our balanced chemical equation to relate moles to re of reactant to moles of product. We always have to check for the limiting reactant if it's necessary. Now, if something is stated to be in excess, then we would be able to skip this step. Otherwise, if we have 
a certain mass given for two different reactants or more, then we would have to check for that limiting reactant. And then finally, once we find the lowest amount that can possibly be made, because that's what is really made in the real world, then we're going to convert that moles of product to mass.